G'day guys, JB here with the off-season finally upon us and another 82-game season finally out of the way. No COVID hiccups, no bubble, a full 82 games. I think it's time that I release formally my 50 greatest NBA players of all time. Some of you will agree, some of you will disagree, some will be surprised by some rankings, some won't be so surprised by some rankings, but I think you'll enjoy it. So sit back, relax, if you can in fact relax listening to lists and the sounds of my voice, and get ready for my 50 greatest NBA players of all time. At number 15, Bob Pettit. Played 1954-55 to 1964-65. One-time NBA champion, two-time league MVP, 10-time All-NBA first team selection, one-time All-NBA second team selection, 11-time All-Star selection, four-time All-Star MVP, two-time scoring champion, one-time rebounding champion, and rookie of the year. Pettit finished top 10 in MVP voting nine times, top five in MVP voting eight times, top three in MVP voting five times, was a two-time runner-up MVP vote getter, and of course, a two-time MVP winner. Now, before I go into Pettit's statistics, there are no defensive stats, no turnover stats, and no three-point shooting stats. In the regular season, he played 792 games, averaging 38.8 minutes per game. He averaged 26.4 points per game, 16.2 rebounds per game, three assists per game. He shot 43.6% from the field, 76.1% from the free throw line. In the playoffs, he played 88 games, averaging 40.3 minutes per game. He averaged 25.5 points per game, 14.8 rebounds per game, and 2.7 assists per game. He shot 41.8% from the field and 77.4% from the free throw line. In the NBA Finals, he played 25 games, averaging 41.5 minutes per game. He averaged 28.4 points per game, 16.6 rebounds per game, 3.3 assists per game. He shot 41.8% from the field and 75.2% from the free throw line. Bob Pettit is known as the only man to lead a team past Bill Russell and those Celtics in the NBA Finals. But what he should be known for is his Hall of Fame career a career that saw him as one of the five best players in it for its entirety. A player who, like Carl Malone, would rank higher if his personal and team shortcomings weren't overshadowed by greater players and teams. Pettit became the first real stretch four in league history, which saw him produce hugely successful offensive seasons with an innate ability to still live on the glass and compete inside as well as anyone before, during or after. Bob Pettit remains the only player to average over 20.0 points per game for every season he played in. This will likely be the case for LeBron James, but Pettit has held this record for nearly 60 years. His career average of 26.4 points per game remains the eighth highest in league history, ahead of scoring champions like George Gervin, Karl Malone and Kobe Bryant. When he retired, he was ranked sixth. He became the first player ever to record 20,000 points and 10,000 rebounds, and when he retired, was the only player to do so. Since then, 18 other men have joined this group, but Pettit remains one of three players to have not played 1,000 games, alongside of Elgin Baylor and David Robinson. His rebounding average of 16.2 in the regular season remains third to Wilt Chamberlain and Bill Russell, and his 14.8 rebound average in the playoffs as him behind Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain, and Wes Unseld. He retired second in total career rebounds and still sits inside the top 20 and is one of five people to average 20 rebounds in a season with Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell, Nate Thurmond, and Jerry Lucas. Add to that, he was the only player to lead a team to championship success against Bill Russell and those Celtics, and a record tying four All-Star Game MVP awards, equaled by Kobe Bryant, and you have one of the greatest players of all time. However, Pettit remains one of the most underrated players of all time due to the era he played in and the monumental shadow cast by Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain. Pettit immediately entered the league following the retirement of George Mikan and assumed the role not only as the best big man in basketball, but as the best player in the world. This was a mantle he held decisively for two seasons before the debut of Bill Russell, but he would not falter from elite level status until retirement. Winning Rookie of the Year in the last year for the Milwaukee Hawks, the franchise would relocate to St. Louis, where they would head to the playoffs. 
In the inaugural season of the league's MVP award, Pettit would receive the honour. Leading St Louis to the divisional finals, the Hawks fell in five games to the Fort Wayne Pistons. Leading into the 1956-57 season, the Hawks traded for All-Star Ed McCauley and future All-Star Cliff Hagen from Boston. This was a franchise-altering move that saw the Hawks into the NBA Finals. The only issue? The trade was for the draft rights to Bill Russell. There are many hypothetical dream teams that never occurred in NBA history, most notably that of Michael Jordan, Hakeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler. But one must wonder what would have been if Pettit and Russell teamed up in their absolute primes. Of course, both teams would meet up in the NBA Finals, with Russell helping start that Celtic dynasty. The following season, with Russell winning MVP, Boston returned to defend their title. Likewise, St. Louis returned to avenge their tough Game 7 loss. Pettit was on a path of destruction in the finals. Capitalising on an injured Bill Russell, Pettit averaged 29.3 points and 17 rebounds a game to secure what is still the only championship in franchise history. This was capped off with a monster series closeout game which has only been seen since in 2021 by Giannis Antetokounmpo. Pettit wrapped up the series with 50 points and 19 rebounds, shooting 55.9% from the field and 80% shooting from the line. Many argue that had Russell been healthy, that the result may have been different, which is fair, but as history has proven, the up championship success comes down to being at your best and playing at your best when it matters. Pettit was rewarded for his hard work again in 1958-59 with his second MVP award. With St Louis finishing with the second best record in the league and 16 games clear of the next best team in their division in the Lakers, it was an easy decision. However, a young Elgin Baylor for the Lakers had other ideas, dragging the Lakers kicking and screaming to a six game victory to advance to the NBA Finals. It can be argued Baylor should have been the MVP that season with his performance. However, a 16 game advantage to lose in the playoffs is tough to justify. St. Louis would again make the NBA Finals two more times in Pettit's career, 1960 and 61. However, the result was the same as 1957 when the Celtics were at full health. To Pettit's credit, he would continue to fight hard for his team, posting 25.7 points and 14.9 rebounds a game in a seven game defeat in 1960, and averaging 28.4 points and 16.4 rebounds a game in five games in 1961. Pettit would continue to lead the Hawks through to his retirement at the end of 1964-65, continuing to prove why he was the best power forward in the league as he racked up All-Star and All-NBA honours the same way he racked up points and rebounds. Bob Pettit is a member of the Basketball Hall of Fame, is a member of the NBA's 25th, 35th, 50th and 75th anniversary teams, and his number nine is retired by Atlanta. At number 14, Stephen Curry. Active since 2009-10. Four-time NBA champion, one-time finals MVP, two-time league MVP, four-time All-NBA first team selection, three-time All-NBA second team selection, one-time All-NBA third team selection, eight-time All-Star selection, one-time All-Star MVP, two-time scoring champion, one-time steals champion, and all-rookie first team selection. Curry has finished top 10 in MVP voting eight times, top five in MVP voting four times, top three in MVP voting three times, and is of course a two-time MVP winner. In the regular season, he has played 826 games, averaging 34.3 minutes per game. He averages 24.3 points per game, 4.6 rebounds per game, 6.5 assists per game, 1.7 steals per game, 0.2 blocks per game, and 3.1 turnovers per game. He shoots 47.3% from the field, 42.8% from deep, and 90.8% from the free throw line. In the playoffs, he's played 134 games, averaging 37.3 minutes per game. He averages 26.6 points per game, 5.4 rebounds per game, 6.2 assists per game, 1.6 steals per game, 0.3 blocks per game, and 3.3 turnovers per game. He shoots 45.2% from the field, 40.1% from deep, and 89.2% from the line. In the NBA Finals, he has played 34 games, averaging 39 minutes per game. He averages 27.3 points per game, 5.8 rebounds per game, 6 assists per game, 1.6 steals per game, 0.3 blocks per game, and 3.5 turnovers per game. He shoots 43.2% from the field, 39.5% from deep, and 91.7% from the free throw line. Steph Curry is the greatest shooter and little man ever. 
No player in the 21st century has changed the game more than Curry, so much that there isn't a priority higher for any player than the ability to shoot the ball. From a shaky start to his career with injuries and trying to lead bad teams, to back-to-back -to -back league MVPs, the only unanimously voted MVP in league history, four championships, a finals MVP, and the greatest shooting career of all time, Curry has broken the mold. He is a superstar leader of a superstar team with no fuss or worries, something that has only been seen in Tim Duncan and Bill Russell before him. There is no debate who the greatest shooter of all time is. This has been the case for the better part of seven seasons. Curry's ability to shoot no matter the situation or range is uncanny, and his efficiency in doing it creates an argument that no player has ever mastered a skill more than Curry has mastered shooting. At 6 foot 3, Curry's field goal percentage of 47.3% when you account for the enormous number of long range shots is staggering. His all time 3 point records are records that may be broken, but they are being set from a blueprint standpoint. There is no mistake that the way defence is played from a contact and physical standpoint certainly help his ability to freely move off the ball and shoot, but the pace and efficiency these records are being set or broken is staggering. Drafted from Davidson University, Curry joined the Warriors next to Corey Maggette and Monte Ellis. And he saw Curry as the guy to transition into the team's next best scoring option as Maggette's career wound down. An all-rookie selection started his career on the right foot, and with the departure of Maggette, saw Curry inserted as the team's second option with grown efficiency the following season. With the lockout season of 2011-12 came a setback, as Curry managed just 26 games as the Warriors' record went backwards. Curry's ankle issues began to cast doubt over whether the Warriors could commit long-term to a prone player. But with the debuting Clay Thompson showing promise as a rookie, Golden State backed in Curry, who instantly repaid the franchise. Playing 78 games in 2012-13, Curry had a breakout season. Leading the Warriors to 47 wins, their best record since 2007-8, and a first round win against the Denver Nuggets, Curry broke Ray Allen's single season three point record of 269 makes finishing with 272, in less attempts. This was highlighted by a statement game against New York with 54 points and 11 makes from deep. This would be the start of Curry's ascension to the top of the NBA. Making the first of his eight All-Star and All-NBA teams in 2013-14, Curry pushed the Warriors into the playoffs with a 51-win season, their best since 1991-92, but fell in seven games to the Los Angeles Clippers. This was just the setback the Warriors and Steph needed. With Clay Thompson and Draymond Green both now starters and all-stars, and plenty of veterans and role players, Curry was able to lead Golden State to a then franchise record 67 wins and earn the first of his back-to-back -back MVP awards en route to his first championship and the Warriors' first NBA title since 1975. While not garnering finals MVP, Steph produced a series that was overshadowed by a poor game too. 2015-16 appeared to be the season that would make the 2015 finals a distant memory. Leading the Warriors to a historical record of 73-9, Curry shattered his previous three-point record with 402 makes en route to a scoring title and the only unanimous MVP award ever. The two issues for both Steph and the Warriors came in the last two rounds of the playoffs. In the Western Conference Finals, the Warriors fell down 3-1 to the last OKC squad of Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook for a mammoth bite back to make the finals before losing a 3-1 series lead as the Cavaliers extracted revenge for the year prior in the NBA Finals. Curry and the Warriors were at a crossroad. While the team contained the back-to-back -back MVP, they needed an answer to LeBron James. That answer came in Kevin Durant, who made one of the most controversial moves ever to join the Warriors. A rejuvenated Golden State with Durant looked all but unstoppable for the following three seasons, en route to repeat championships in 2017 and 2018. While Durant would earn Finals MVP in both series, Curry did not underperform. Posting a rounded 27-8-9 in 2017 and 28-6-7 in 2018, it appeared a three-peat was all but secured in 2019 until Durant and Thompson suffered injury before going down in six games to Toronto. Curry averaged a rounded 31-5-6 on the series, but couldn't get the win. 2019-20 saw Curry suffer his first serious injury since his ankle complaints, managing just five games. Many questioned if Curry would return as the player he once was. That question was answered in 2020-21 with a scoring title, top three MVP finish, and a near playoff berth. With the impending arrival of Thompson back to the team in 2021-22 and the improvement of Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole, 
Curry was as motivated as ever to return to show he could be a finals MVP. With the Warriors playing their best basketball at the business end of the season and Curry firing as a team leader, Golden State captured their fourth title of the Curry era, with Steph earning finals MVP for the first time. This has all but cemented Steph in the annals of league history. It is just a matter of waiting to see if he can continue to climb the all-time list. Stephen Curry was selected to the NBA's 75th anniversary team. His number 30 will undoubtedly be retired in Golden State, and he will be a first ballot Hall of Fame member when he is eligible. At number 13, Jerry West. Played 1960-61 to 1973-74. One-time NBA champion, one-time finals MVP, 10-time All-NBA first team selection, two-time All-NBA second team selection, four-time All-Defensive first team selection, one-time All-Defensive second team selection, 14-time All-Star selection, one-time All-Star MVP, one-time scoring champion, one-time assist champion. West finished top 10 in MVP voting nine times, top five in MVP voting eight times, top three in MVP voting five times, and is a record tying four-time runner-up MVP vote getter. Now, before I continue on with West's stats, it should be known that there are limited to no defensive stats, there are no turnover stats, and he did not play in a three-point era. In the regular season, he played 932 games, averaging 39.2 minutes per game. He averaged 27 points per game, 5.8 rebounds per game, 6.7 assists per game, 2.6 steals per game, and 0.7 blocks per game. He shot 47.4% from the field and 81.4% from the stripe. In the playoffs, he played 153 games, averaging 41.3 minutes per game. He averaged 29.1 points per game, 5.6 rebounds per game, and 6.3 assists per game. He shot 46.9% from the field and 80.5% from the free throw line. In the NBA Finals, he played 55 games, averaging 43.2 minutes per game. He averaged 30.5 points per game, five rebounds per game, 5.6 assists per game. He shot 45.9% from the field and 82.6% from the free throw line. Had it not been for Bill Russell and Willis Reed, Jerry West would have more wins in the NBA Finals. If it wasn't for Wilt Chamberlain, Willis Reed, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Jerry West would have multiple MVP awards. Instead, West remains the logo, an endearing symbol of his career. West epitomised what it meant to be a complete player and remains one of the most tenacious competitors the game has ever seen, despite his shortcomings. The only finals MVP on a losing team in league history, West's ability on both ends of the floor for the entirety of his career remain a barometer for guards throughout history. West's play still ranks as some of the best ever. His four runner-up MVP awards remain the most for a player never to win it and is tied with the likes of LeBron James and Larry Bird for the most in history. West retired third all-time in regular season scoring, remains inside the top 25 all-time, is one of two players to play less than 1,000 games in the 25,000 point club, remains ninth all-time in career playoff points, and retired over 800 points ahead in first place in career playoff points. His regular season points per game average of 27.0 sits him sixth all time, and his playoffs points per game average of 29.1 sits him fifth all time. He also still holds the record for consecutive 40 point playoff games with six, the single series playoff points per game average of 46.3 points against Baltimore in 1965, and the second highest single postseason point per game average of 40.6 points per game in the same year. Coming off a gold medal at the 1960 Rome Olympics, West was drafted second behind Oscar Robinson to team up alongside of Elgin Baylor at the Lakers. West proved to be the two-way complement the team needed next to its star athletic wing, helping the Lakers to win one game of the NBA Finals in his rookie season. West raised his level of play in the playoffs and would continue the trend for the rest of his career. Despite end results, West played his best basketball when the lights were at their brightest and the pressure was at its highest. 1961-62 remains arguably the most famous season in NBA history and a championship series many regard as the greatest ever. West himself had a stellar season, finishing fifth in MVP voting and earning the first of his 10 career All-NBA first teams. With Elgin Baylor placing fourth, the Lakers looked primed and set for a championship run. Despite Baylor averaging over 40 points a game and West over 30 points a game, it wasn't enough as those Celtics won their fourth consecutive championship. This would be the first of six finals defeats thanks to the Celtics and eight overall for West's career. 
This didn't deter West in his pursuit of a championship. Despite just 55 games in 1962-63, the Lakers pushed through to the NBA Finals before a defeat in the 1964 playoffs thanks to Bob Pettit and the St. Louis Hawks had the Lakers wondering what it would take. The duo of Baylor and West battled gallantly, pouring in points at a rate that has only been seen since from Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. 1964-65 is the best example of this. With West averaging a then career-high 31 points a game, he would go on a scoring tear in the playoffs that to this day hasn't been matched. In the Western Division Finals, West scored 49, 52, 44, 48, 43 and 42 points in six games to set the single series playoff scoring record of 46.3 points per game, all without Elgin Baylor. He then posted back-to-back 40-point games in the NBA Finals without Baylor as the Lakers went down in five games. Only LeBron James has as many 40-point playoff games in a single postseason as West. Over the next four years, the Lakers made the finals three times. All three times, the Lakers fell to that Celtics team. 1968-69 appeared to be the Lakers' best chance at a championship. With Will Chamberlain joining the team, the Lakers now had an answer for Russell, and with the Celtics limping into the playoffs, looked as vulnerable as ever. West saw this as a chance to win the big one. However, the poor play of Chamberlain and Baylor at crucial points cost the Lakers. West collected four games of 40 points or more, including a 53-point effort to open the series, but it wasn't enough as the Celtics did it again in Game 7, 108 to 106. The only consolation for West was being awarded the inaugural finals MVP and remains the only player on a losing team to achieve this feat. The Lakers returned to the NBA Finals the following year, and despite an injury to MVP Willis Reed for New York, the Knicks spoiled the Lakers' party again. Despite finishing runner-up MVP, West couldn't deliver for Los Angeles in Game 7, as Walt Frazier delivered one of the greatest Game 7 performances ever seen. It appeared the Lakers were never going to win a championship. That was until 1971-72, where a runner-up MVP West led the Lakers on an NBA record 33 consecutive wins en route to the 1972 NBA Championship against a Willis Reed-less New York Knicks. West was finally a champion, and a relieved one at that. Facing the Knicks again the following season, Willis Reed would return and collect finals MVP honours as the Knicks got the better of Los Angeles. This was enough for West, who after 31 games and a brief playoff showing in 1973-4, retired. West's legacy off the court is as prolific as it was on the court with his fingerprints spread all over NBA history as an executive. Jerry West is a member of the Basketball Hall of Fame, was selected to the NBA's 35th, 50th and 75th anniversary teams, and his number 44 is retired by Los Angeles. At number 12, Moses Malone. Played 1976-77 to 1994-95. Moses was a one-time NBA champion, one-time finals MVP, three-time league MVP, four-time All-NBA first-team selection, four-time All-NBA second-team selection, one-time All-Defensive first-team selection, one-time All-Defensive second-team selection, 12-time All-Star selection, and a six-time rebounding champion. Moses finished top 10 in MVP voting 10 times, top five in MVP voting five times, top three in MVP voting four times, and was, of course, a three-time MVP winner. In the regular season, he played 1,329 games, averaging 33.9 minutes per game. He averaged 20.6 points per game, 12.2 rebounds per game, 1.4 assists per game, 0.8 steals per game, 1.3 blocks per game, and 3.1 turnovers per game. He shot 49.1% from the field, 10% from deep, and 76.9% from the free throw line. In the playoffs, he played 94 games, averaging 40.4 minutes per game. He averaged 22.1 points per game, 13.8 rebounds per game, 1.4 assists per game, 0.9 steals per game, 1.6 blocks per game, and 2.6 turnovers per game. He shot 47.9% from the field, 14.3% from deep, and 76.2% from the free throw line. In the NBA Finals, he played 10 games, averaging 42.6 minutes per game. He averaged 23.7 points per game, 16.6 rebounds per game, 1.6 assists per game, 1.1 steals per game, 1.9 blocks per game, and 2.3 turnovers per game. He shot 44.2% from the field, he did not attempt a three-point shot in the NBA Finals, and shot 67.6% from the free throw line. 
The list of players to win three league MVP awards and a finals MVP award contains only seven players. Sitting alongside Michael Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, LeBron James, Will Chamberlain, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, Moses Malone delivered the most underrated career in NBA history. No matter what perspective you look at it from, peak, endurance, ability to perform when it matters, or ability to rack up numbers, Malone ticks every box. Big enough to play centre, but built to dominate like a power forward, Malone remains the greatest offensive rebounder of all time and one of the best second chance point getters ever. His career totals reflect the player of great peak ability and endurance. His resume shows that of an all time great, but this has been forgotten about as time has passed. The trouble for Malone is the era he played in. He dominated in the late 1970s as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Julius Irving, George Gervin and Bill Walton hit their peak. His prime fell at the beginning of the Larry Bird and Magic Johnson era and his career wound down as Michael Jordan and the next generation of bigs in Hakeem Olajuwon, David Robinson and Patrick Ewing began their ascension. Malone's impact can't be underestimated. In his career timeline from 1976-77 to 1994-95, in the regular season, no player had more points, total rebounds, offensive rebounds, minutes played, total win shares and offensive win shares. He was second to Robert Parrish in defensive rebounds and finished third behind Alex English and Dominic Wilkins in made shots. He remains top 10 in points scored, top 5 in career rebounds, sits first in offensive rebounds and 8th in defensive rebounds. Moses played in the ABA before the merger saw him to the NBA. At 6 foot 10, Malone was solid enough to play either side of the low post with equal efficiency. After two games in Buffalo, Malone was traded to Houston, where his impact next to Rudy Tomjanovic and Calvin Murphy was evident. As the third option, Malone helped the Rockets to 49 wins. His first round matchup with Elvin Hayes and Wes Unseld proved he could hang with the best bigs in the league before his future team, the Philadelphia 76ers, eliminated the Rockets. Malone's first playoff run saw him average 18.8 points and 16.9 rebounds a game, something that would become the standard. With Malone missing the end of the following season and the Kermit Washington incident almost killing Rudy Tomjanovic, the Rockets fell to 28 wins in 1977-78. However, Malone would make a statement the following season. Moses would win the first of his three MVP awards in 1978-79 as the Rockets turned their record around by 19 wins. Moses posted 24.8 points and 17.6 rebounds per game on 54% shooting, won the first of his six rebounding titles, his rebounding average remains the second highest of any MVP not named Bill Russell or Wilt Chamberlain, and his 7.2 offensive rebounds per game are still the highest in a season since the league began tracking them in 1973-74. While the Rockets would be eliminated in the first round, it was clear Malone was ready to stake his case as the best centre in the league. Malone would back up his efforts in 1980, but Houston's record dipped despite a better playoff run. The next three seasons, however, would stamp Malone as the best player in the game. Malone in 1980-81 returned to leading the league in rebounding, posted 27.8 points a game, and to that point played his best defensive year. All of this with a Rockets team that finished 40-42. and 42. Malone would then go on a tear through the playoffs. Round 1 saw a win against the defending champion Lakers of Kareem and Magic. Round 2 saw a 7 game win against George Gervin and the Spurs. And a 5 game win against Kansas City saw the Rockets into the NBA Finals, going down in 6 games to Larry Bird and the Celtics. This remains one of the greatest playoff runs of all time to never win a championship. It was clear Malone meant business. He would be awarded his second MVP in 1981-82 averaging a career-high 31.1 points a game and leading the league in rebounds again with 14.7 per game, but the Rockets would again fall in the playoffs in the first round. With Houston sold to new owners and Malone a restricted free agent, Moses completed a sign-and-trade with the Rockets to the 76ers for Colwell Jones. With Philadelphia coming off an NBA Finals defeat against the Lakers and their third Finals defeat of the Irving era, they knew they had the final piece of the puzzle to get them over the hump. Moses would take the reins of a team and delivered one of the greatest single seasons of all time. Leading the 76ers to 65-17 and in the regular season and a 12-1 playoff record after promising, quote, foe, 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 Malone racked up his best season as he won league MVP, a finals MVP, was named to the All-NBA and All-Defensive First Teams and collected that elusive NBA championship that he, Dr. J and Philadelphia had so desperately chased. 
Malone remained a force within the league until his last All-Star appearance in 1988-89. With Charles Barkley joining Philadelphia following the 1984 draft, Malone was able to teach Barkley how to conduct himself in the league and transition the team into his control. Malone was traded at the end of the 1985-86 season, where he became a veteran journeyman playing for Washington, Atlanta, Milwaukee, Philadelphia, again, and San Antonio. He remained healthy through until 1992-93 in his last season in Milwaukee, before a 55-game return to Philadelphia and just 17 games as a minute-pinching reserve for San Antonio saw his career come to an end. Moses Malone is a member of the Basketball Hall of Fame, was selected to the NBA's 50th and 75th anniversary teams, his number 24 is retired by Houston, and his number 2 is retired by Philadelphia. At number 11, Kobe Bryant. Played 1996-97 to 2015-16. Bryant was a five-time NBA champion, two-time finals MVP, one-time league MVP, 11-time All-NBA first-team selection, two-time All-NBA second-team selection, two-time All-NBA third-team selection, nine-time All-Defensive first-team selection, three-time All-Defensive second-team selection, 18-time All-Star selection, four-time All-Star game MVP, a two-time scoring champion, and all-rookie second-team selection. Bryant finished top 10 in MVP voting 12 times, top five in MVP voting 11 times, top three in MVP voting five times, was a one-time runner-up MVP winner, and of course, a one-time MVP winner. In the regular season, he played 1,346 games, averaging 36.1 minutes per game. He averaged 25 points per game, 5.2 rebounds per game, 4.7 assists per game, 1.4 steals per game, 0.5 blocks per game, and three turnovers per game. He shot 44.7% from the field, 32.9% from deep, and 83.7% from the free throw line. In the playoffs, he played 222 games, averaging 39.3 minutes per game. He averaged 25.6 points per game, 5.1 rebounds per game, 4.7 assists per game, 1.4 steals per game, 0.7 blocks per game, and 2.9 turnovers per game. He shot 44.8% from the field, 33.1% from deep, and 81.6% from the free throw line. In the NBA Finals, he played 37 games, averaging 42.7 minutes per game. He averaged 25.3 points per game, 5.7 rebounds per game, 5.1 assists per game, 1.8 steals per game, 0.9 blocks per game, and 3.3 turnovers per game. He shot 41.2% from the field, 31.4% from deep, and 84.8% from the free throw line. Kobe Bryant is the most polarizing superstar in NBA history. Many see Kobe is either one of the two greatest players of all time or overrated, citing his uncanny resemblance in skill set and aesthetic demeanor to the man many see as the greatest player of all time. But isn't that the biggest compliment you can give Kobe? Kobe is the closest perimeter player the league has seen to Michael Jordan, a player who, if given the same athletic ability, would have seen improved efficiency in his game and a fairer comparison and ranking. But let that not detract from who Kobe was in his own right. The hardest working player in NBA history and a player who wanted the ball in his hands no matter the situation. There is no surprise that Bryant ranks highly throughout league history. He is first, tied first, or stands alone in All-Star Game MVP awards, All-Defensive First Team selections, and the only leader of a back-to-back -back championship team that defeated three All-Stars in each season. He is second, tied second, or stands second in All-Star Games, All-NBA First Team selections, total All-NBA selections, All-Defensive selections, and he's one of just two players to win the scoring title and make the All-Defensive First Team in the same season. He sits fourth all-time in regular season and playoff scoring, making him one of the most prolific offensive players ever. He is a member of one of just five three-peat teams in league history, and he is one of six players to win back-to-back -back finals MVP awards. Until LeBron James cemented his legacy as the greatest prep-to-pro player of all time, Kobe Bryant held this title. Bryant's career for a high school to pro player is almost scripted, but the screenplay far surpassed any written story. His early years outlined the mentality and work ethic he had. His first taste of championship success was coupled with big time performances and a hunger to lead. His time as the leader of a bad team showed his ability to produce as much as any one player in history. His second run of championship success showed a veteran with leadership skills and an ability to motivate teammates. 
His final peak years showed a man desperate to reclaim his throne. In closing, his final years showed a lion who could roar loud and proud, but had conceded leadership of the pack. 1996-97, Bryant in the playoffs against Utah shot four air balls in an attempt to extend the series. No success, but showed his character. 1997-98, Kobe is named an all-star and helps the Lakers to the Western Conference Finals. 1999, one of few players who returned to play in peak condition, having outworked anyone in the off-season. However, the Lakers fell short again. All of this led to built-up frustration from Bryant and his teammate at centre, Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq himself had playoff shortcomings that were piling up, and he wanted success as well. Enter Phil Jackson, known for cultivating two three-peats with MJ and Chicago in the 1990s. 1999-2000, Shaq was the MVP and Kobe was on fire and despite a battle in the conference finals, claimed victory in the NBA finals against Indiana. Kobe suffered an early injury in game two of the series, but delivered in game four to extend the series lead three to one. The first of many major playoff performances and the first of 12 all defensive seasons. 2000-2001, a massive middle two rounds from Bryant established himself as the best perimeter player in the NBA as the Lakers finished the postseason 15-1 and as repeat champions. 2001-2, Bryant earned the first of 11 All-NBA first-team honours in his most consistent playoff performance to date, as the Lakers became the last team to ever free-peat. Bryant by now showed his ability to work, perform and deliver in the big moments. He wanted to lead the team. 2002-3, Bryant delivered the best all-around season of his career. However, an unfit and injured Shaq Frustrated Bryant, and with egos clashing, the Lakers were eliminated in the second round. 2003-04, the Lakers signed both Carl Malone and Gary Payton. Bryant reduced his numbers to accommodate his teammates, which saw another trip to the NBA Finals. However, an inefficient series by Bryant saw frustrations flare up and boil over. The Lakers picked Kobe over Shaq. Bryant remained a Laker. O'Neal was off to Miami, while Malone and Payton departed. 2004-05, Phil Jackson departed, and Bryant led the Lakers to just 34 wins. Kobe continued to produce as arguably the best player in the league. In 2005-06, Bryant had one of the greatest scoring seasons of all time, leading the league with 35.4 points a game, including a 40-point per game month in January, and 81 points versus Toronto. In 2006-07, Bryant won back-to-back scoring titles and led the Lakers to the playoffs again, but insisted the team either build around him or trade him. In 2007-08, Kobe was finally crowned MVP of the league and led the Lakers back to the NBA Finals. In 2008-09 and 2009-10, Kobe again led the Lakers to the Finals, earning back-to-back Finals MVP honours as the leader of the only team to defeat two teams of three All-Stars in back-to-back championship series. In 2010-11 and 2011-12, Kobe again led the Lakers back to the playoffs before a second round defeat by eventual champion Mavericks and Dirk Nowitzki and a defeat at the hands of eventual NBA finalists, Oklahoma City. In 2012-13, Kobe dragged the Lakers into the postseason with a massive scoring binge to end the season before a career-defining Achilles tendon rupture ended his season and his peak years. From 2013-14 to 2015-16, Kobe attempted to recapture the glory but managed just 105 of 246 games in his final three years. His swan song saw him bow out with a 60-point night against the Utah Jazz in the Staples Centre. Kobe Bryant is a member of the Basketball Hall of Fame, was selected to the NBA's 75th anniversary team, and both his number 8 and number 24 are retired by Los Angeles.